Carvana has been one of the most eventful business stories of the past decade. There's a lot to respect and a lot to criticize. It seems like there's always something new and unexpected happening. If you have not been following everything as it unfolds, let me try to briefly catch you up because you're going to want to hear this. Carvana has been described by the company itself as the Amazon of used cars, and I think that's a great way to put it. They are an exclusively online retailer of used cars. They were the first to do it in such a big way, and many would tell you that they have disrupted their industry. I think I'm safe in saying that the thing that they are most known for are their car vending machines. Maybe you've seen these 10 story structures filled with dozens of used cars. I have not personally used one, but if you have, tell me about your experience because it sounds like fun. It was all a unique enough concept that became really successful before falling tremendously. I will look deeper into the figures, but to get an idea of how things have been going, all you have to do is look at the stock price. Holy cow, in August of 2021, it was trading at more than 300 $75 a share that has since been reduced to less than $10. That is $58 billion in value completely gone over the past year and a half. Over that time, the founder and CEO of Carvana, Ernie Garcia III, has seen his personal net worth fall 98%, now sitting well below a billion dollars. And there's been widespread speculation that Carvana may have to file for bankruptcy. That is concerning, right? Not even two years ago, they are one of the most successful, fastest growing companies companies out there, and now they are facing potential bankruptcy. I hope it's clear at this point why I wanted to make this video talking about the unusual rise and fall of Carvana. Back in 1990, Ernest Garcia II was a real estate developer involved in a major scandal with an institution called Lincoln Savings and Loan. He admitted to committing a fraud that somehow hid the ownership of a bunch of land outside of Phoenix, obviously a complicated scandal that led to not only the entire bank collapsing, but to Ernest Garcia of the second being sentenced to three years probation. During that probationary period, he bought a bankrupt rental car company and used the assets of it to establish a used car dealership specializing in subprime loans for people who didn't qualify for traditional ones. He renamed the new company Drive Time Automotive and in the following decades, it grew into the largest used car retailer of its kind. Operating over 100 dealerships across more than a dozen states, selling around 50,000 used cars that totaled to about one billion dollars in sales each year. Even today, they are still a significant chain of car dealerships that many of you have likely seen or even bought something from. The reason I'm talking so much about drive time is because Carvana started as part of it, though initially a very small part of it. See, in 2007, his son, Ernie Garcia III, started working for his father's company. He had recently earned a degree from Stanford University and went on to apply his talents to various financial roles, eventually working his way up to vice president and treasurer. Over his five years with drive time, he became knowledgeable about trends that were happening within the industry, notably the increasing role that the internet was having on the car buying process. He learned that almost everybody was performing some kind of online research before ever even going to the dealership. They were spending hours on a dozen different websites, in many cases learning more that way than they were from the salesman. It made him believe that the entire process could potentially be done online and that many customers would actually actually prefer it that way. So in 2013, Drive Time provided $50 million in funding to establish Carvana as a subsidiary of theirs. Later that year, they opened their first car vending machine in Atlanta as a way for customers to pick up the cars that they had bought online. It was officially labeled as an automated parking system and was filled with cars that they bought at dealer auctions. A big benefit of the system is simplicity. It completely takes car salesmen out of the picture because it turns out that a lot of people don't really want to deal with car salesmen. So many customers find the direct approach to be quicker, easier, and less stressful. Plus, with the money that they're saving on the simplified structure, they're able to pass the savings on to the customer. Typically, they have sold their cars at prices that have averaged well below the Kelly Blue Book prices. Carvana system can also lead to a better selection of cars available to the customer. They use proprietary algorithms when acquiring the cars, put them through their 150-point inspection process, and then pull all of them 
together from across the country. That approach does seem to provide more options when shopping at Carvana over other dealerships. I mean, that is sounding pretty attractive, right? Buying a used car for less money with a bigger selection, and instead of talking to a salesperson, you get to use a cool vending machine. I'm sorry if some of that sounded like a commercial for Carvana, but those are the biggest things that separate them from a traditional dealership that a potential customer may find to be attractive. One of the biggest issues, though, especially in the early years, has been getting people to try something that's so intimidating because it's new and different. They have done their best to address it by specifically advertising these benefits, building a user-friendly website that shows off the cars properly and compares the prices, and by offering a seven-day money-back guarantee. You may be hesitant to buy a car that you haven't test-driven or even seen in person, so the fact that it could be refunded will make you feel safer about making the purchase. And with all of this going for them, Carvana truly became a huge success, aggressively scaling the business to serve over 300 markets across the country. In 2015, they were on Forbes' list of America's most promising companies. In 2017, they had an initial public stock offering that raised over $200 million to help them expand further. And by 2022, they were selling over 1,000 cars a day, making them a Fortune 500 company with over $10 billion in sales. So, the big questions at this point are, why is Carvana believed to be on the verge of bankruptcy? Why have investors completely lost confidence in the company, and just how has everything gone so bad so fast? There are a bunch of smaller reasons that are probably at least worth mentioning. They have had multiple legal issues where they allegedly violated state laws and lost some licenses to sell cars, but as far as I could tell, those issues have been isolated to Michigan and Illinois, so not impacting most of their regions. Their marketing has been criticized, and they have been spending a lot of money on it, almost $500 million a year, including a big Super Bowl commercial in 2022. Though, as I said before, it is the kind of thing where they do have to spread the word about the concept, so I would say a high marketing budget is justified. Plus, I think that Super Bowl commercial was pretty funny, with this customer proudly talking to everyone about her experience with Carvana. Those are some of the smaller reasons, and I believe that there are three main reasons behind their struggles. The first one being a decline in the used car market. During the pandemic, I'm sure we all know, there were supply chain issues that led to a chip shortage for car manufacturers. It slowed down the production of new cars to where customers were being forced to wait extended periods of time to get one. It motivated many people to buy a used car instead, which of course was good for Carvana. If you look at any of the graphs I've been showing you, maybe you've already noticed that they skyrocketed during the pandemic. There were so many people trying to buy used cars from them that they were having trouble keeping up. When the prices were peaking, Carvana went out and bought a bunch of used cars at those high prices. Scaling the business has always been their big plan from the very beginning, so they took this unusual demand as their opportunity to do that. And to further complicate things, interest rates have gone way up. Anyone looking to finance a used car now has to pay a higher percentage for that loan, making people more hesitant to do it and making the demand for them go down. So when the chip shortage started getting better, things started leveling off and getting back to normal, they were left with this inventory that they paid way too much money for and have been having trouble selling it at a decent profit. I know that all got a little complicated, but in short, for various reasons, the used car market was way up during the pandemic and has since started to fall and that has reflected a rise and fall for Carvana. Even if you look at a comparable used car company like CarMax, they have also experienced a corresponding rise and fall, but it was less dramatic for CarMax and part of that is because they are more in person while Carvana, of course, is online. That's actually my second reason behind their decline, people returning to physical dealerships. During the pandemic, people were staying at home shopping online more than ever before, and when it ended, people shifted a lot of their business back to the physical stores. I'm sure you could see how that would contribute to the rise and fall of an online retailer like Carvana. My final reason behind the decline is their debt. It's incredibly straightforward because companies file for bankruptcy because they can't pay off their debts, and Carvana certainly has a lot of it. In fact, they have steadily been building up their debt since well before the pandemic. That's just when everything started getting out of hand. It's where most of their funding has come from over the years, considering they have never reported a yearly profit. There's nothing to reinvest. They've been absorbing the losses with hopes that once they're bigger, the concept will be efficient enough to finally start making money. It's a long-term plan that was accelerated during the pandemic, but then dropped them lower than ever when it ended. It's not like they were completely stable going into all of this, so they have been particularly vulnerable. Consider that in 2022, 
to, they were forced to sell cars that they paid too much money for, they had a goodwill impairment of over $800 million, they made this $2 billion acquisition that was intended to further scale things and reach more customers that doesn't seem to be paying off like they had hoped. Plus, all of that debt forced them to pay almost half a billion dollars in interest that year. I mean, they weren't making any money before, so they're certainly not going to make any money with all of this extra stuff bringing them down. So unless there is a huge resurgence in the used car market or someone out there with a lot of money that still believes in the potential of Carvana that would be willing to help them through until they figure something out or conditions improve, things aren't looking good. Let me know in the comments, what do you see for the future of Carvana? Is the business model strong enough to keep them running or are there going to be a bunch of abandoned 10-foot vending machines on the side of the road visible from far away? I don't know. I told you, it is a fascinating subject. They were kind of ruined by the pandemic in an unusual way. Before that, they at least appeared to be a promising company that was steadily growing. So if nothing like that had happened, I imagine they would still be in a decent condition. Also, have you ever used Carvana? They've been known to have high referral rates, low return rates, indicating that customers tend to be happy with their experience. So is that the case for you? Or are there some major downsides that have been mostly overlooked? And any other thoughts you have about Carvana, leave them in the comments. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Thank you for watching.